Hello there everyone and welcome back to TNO, the last of of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mark Lover, and here we are playing as the Ukrainian state once again with a, still a bugged a little thing here. Um, but, a Brothers of Defiance, highly respected general, I must congratulate you on your triumphant liberation of our dear Ukraine. Through your martial prowess, our people can finally embrace the freedom robbed from them for four decades. God has looked down favorably on your command and I pray that he continues to bless your path. I must also confess that I do not write to you with honest intentions, but those are the deceitful brigand. Our good has come to this, but the actions of the Vods threaten the future you have won for our nations. Your old slav is formulating a plan to liberate us from the Vods' tyrannical gaze once and for all, and so I write to you, dear friend, to inform you of our plight. I'm aware that asking you to commit treason against a nation, you've just freed betrays your principles, but I hope that within your heart you will see the righteousness of our cause. If my request is too demanding, then I implore you to pretend that this letter does not exist for the sake of your men. I'll pray for the safety and health of you and your family in these turbulent times. Ukraine needs every hero it has. I only ask that you not abandon her now in time of great need. With true respect, El Rebet. An earnest plea reaches opportunistic eyes. I hate that this keeps, it's just really bugged. Because things were still war. And we had to do this, though. So. But I see this down here. We get more growth. I like that. Release stability, gain, gain uh, modify, more war support. Hey, military professional begins to improve too. That's pretty good as well. But we just improved someone else, so. Regular grain consumption goes down. I like that one too. Can you make it actually become negative? Let's see if we get the next event here too, which we should. Because we have no focus tree right now at all. The patricians play. A plot to overthrow the Vaz? It's not often we get to fall in the Bandera's footsteps, Cook mutter with a sarcastic drone. An opportunity to do as Bandera did is a rare occasion indeed. A buzzard chinyuk chimed in with a very wry smile, and it would be a waste to not uh, a waste to squander at Rebet's friendship. Drop the trees in his talk, Shukevich growled. You shouldn't fall for such honeyed words either. Stetsko is the mastermind this plan. Mastermind behind this plan. It's entirely possible that Lev has become another one of his puppets, truthfully. Shukevich did not know what to do with the letter. He'd considered torturing it without saying a word. That would have been the correct choice, and yet he summoned his advisors for their input. I'll remind all of you that once, that as officers of the army who are maintained to spin at all times. I apologize, I should not have allowed my eagerness to cloud my judgment. Boza Chinyuk replied. However, Cook interjected, his point is valid. If there ever was a chance to force a force of Vaza reform to reform or resign, this is it. Shukevich could not deny his subordinate observations. Perhaps you should summon them to validate a feeling he had denied. Strong men follow their desires and seize what rightfully belongs to them. Would he allow himself to be subordinated to a weasel to escape the illogical wrath of a feral animal? No. Do not be sidelined again. Perhaps I was too quick to judge words and treasons, Shukevich said. It wouldn't be our fault if word of the Vaz fall reached us too late after all. A third joins the devil's dance. So, green... We can still steal stuff from our grain supplies, but still. The Outlander. Klevchivsky looked at the great city of Kiev from his window. The edifices that sprawled before him were distorted by his own entire reflection. Klevchivsky could not help but stare at the specter that stared back at him from the window. His eyes, ringed by darkness, bore into this very psyche as the weight of the many sleepless nights crushed his consciousness. Was this ancient man... This walking husk in the mirror really him, of course. Was it not what he deserved for this weakness that allowed the UPA to be subverted from within? The rising sun's accusatory glare burst through the window, momentarily blinding the vase. As the stars left Klyachevsky's withered eyes, he could only gaze upon the shining city outside his window. Kiev, such a glorious and ancient city, conquered by foreigners yet never truly lost to the Ukrainian people, was alien to him. The gleaming optimism of the warm city outside his office had not once been felt by the Vaz, who had lurked in the damp thickets and hill hillocks of Galicia for nearly fifteen years. The starving bogs that could swallow men whole were not but a memory, and yet the unknown city expanse before him was quickly or equally overwhelming. It was unacceptable. Klyevchivsky thought to himself that a Vaz could ever be unfamiliar with the crown jewel of his great nation, so the Vaz donned his coat and called for his bodyguard. A tour was in order for the city's greatest liberator. And so the Vaz began to open his heart pathetic. Wow, negative 8%. We have a surplus, but uh, kind of ain't doing so well right now. Duplicity duped. As Klievchivsky returned to the headquarters, he could sense the change in the atmosphere. Through the expressions on the faces of the more numerous guards and the sudden speed with which his driver raced through the gates, ex exiting his vehicle. <clears throat> He loudly demanded to know what had happened, and the hard faces of the soldiers gave way to the shaken visage of Lenkavyevsky. He obtained his answer. 
It had been an attack and seeing that he's gone only slightly different. Uh, the building would have been occupied by insurrectionists rather than loyal guards. Explain, explaining the times line of the assault. Len Kaivsky described the sudden attempt at storming and capture that had been made. He rushed to the desperate defense that ex then explained the eventual victory and the capture of some of the visited attackers. Miserable men now huddled at gunpoint in the corner of the courtyard. Under his harsh interrogation, they admitted the identity of their master, Setsko. At that, Klyevchivsky silently nodded and turned. As he walked away, several guards brought rope with which to form a makeshift noose around a lamppost. The unfortunate attackers would no doubt be the first of many hoisted as such. A close call indeed, of course. I don't want to lose any more. Uh, you know what? We're already negative 100% stability. Who cares? God, this is annoying. Nation government's gone, and there you go. The trap weasel. The nondescript exterior of the small building tucked away on a quiet side street belied the importance of the events that have been set in motion within it. At a small table behind the barred door sat a table. And around that table sat three men who had put their plans into motion. Klyev just had to follow that I all knew. If they were to secure the future of Ukraine, and though many events have been set into motion, the one most important, Klyachevsky's actual death has yet to succeed, and had yet to return any information from those assigned to it all. The arguments between Stetsko, Robet, and Lebed started quietly but quickly grew in earnest. Had it occurred? Had it been foiled? Were there oversights in the plan? Surely not, Stetsko were to assure the others. They just had to be patient and confident. That confidence was soon shattered. By the sound of trucks arriving and the harsh shouting of orders from both the front and rear of the building. Moments later, the door shattered inwards, and as the soldiers rushed in, quickly arresting all three of them, the answer was definitely given. As he was being led away to a fate he could well imagine, Stetsko could not, for a life of him, understand what had gone wrong. That someone talked. Been turned around, been turned weeks ago? Or was there a simple coincidence, a rifle, right turn instead of a left? Imagine he would never know. He was right, and that we now have a deep cleanse that we must perform. Stop asking for grain, we have none. Mm -hmm. Weekly stability could go up. Negative 20%, negative 20%. Yeah, is this fantastic or what? In the aftermath of Stasco's attempt at a coup, the many generals of the UPA, especially those who had not been entirely aligned behind Klyachevsky, had been summoned to headquarters. There was no room to, for dissent or delay. They all knew, not now, not while they were being watched. Despite extreme levels of security, the mood in the assembly room was nervous in the extreme, for none knew or could say with any certainty how involved anyone else had been in the attempt. When Klyachevsky himself entered and began his speech, the mood darkened even further with rapidity. He railed against the treason of Setsko, and began reading names of those involvement who had been discovered. With each name came strong arms pulling them away, out and from away from the room. The list went on and on, and the more politically aware among the leadership realized that beyond purging Setsko's confederates, Glyachevsky was also removing anyone who had suspicions about. He now had the political capital and was using it decisively. Some of the names were expected, but when Shukhevich and his closest allies were identified, the room went silent. For a moment all thought there to be violence, but more guards entered and grossly outnumbered and they had no alternative but to surrender. As he left under guard, those that remained understood the threat well. There will be no further dissent permitted of any kind. Another threat removed, of course. You know, we might do that. We definitely could use the growth because that's well, that's not very good. Now we have a deficit with literally no negative growth. Triumph of the Vaz. Although the morning in question was not particularly cold, those in attendance were chilled to the bone. Almost overnight, and in the aftermath of Stetsko's coup attempt, the entire political order of the UPA had been overturned. Factionalism, or at least factionalism against Klyachevsky, was to end today. With the end of those who had been leading it, the gallows had been assembled the night before, sturdily built and prepared to hold. Their imminent burden for many nights to come, for many examples to be set. The guards arrived first, followed by those ranking members of the UPA who had been deemed loyal to Shukhevich. Arranging careful squares and watch, they noticed by hard eyes and well-armed soldiers they awaited the arrival of the other groups. One by one they came, first the Vod's confidants and the most trustworthy officers, then the Vod's himself taking a place of prominence, and finally, but then, the condemned, to a one looking intentionally pathetic in the sackcloth they had been given. The event itself was swift. The charges were read out of Stetsko, Shukhevich, and many others were led forward and placed on the gallows as the news tightened. The only single nod from Klyachevsky. The lever was pulled, the figures dropped, and the sharp crack of breaking bone echoed throughout the square. The bodies were left hanging, uh, hanging. As the forced crowd departed, they would not be taken down for many weeks. Absolute control. As three heads become one, Ukraine is united by a tide of revanche spirit. Let justice be done through the heavens, though the heavens fall. They get what they deserve. Do they not? 
the deluge of deceit. We've been betrayed. Roman Shukovich and Yaroslav Stetsko, both former Banderites, have defected the Melnyaks, exposing systematic disloyalty to the UPA and the legacy of the Stepan Bandera, who shaped this nation. Where else could there be disloyalty? The Suza Bespiki? Of the very administration? Now we can't trust anybody. Moving forward, we must be vigilant. It is crucial that no more defectors arise. To do this, we must thoroughly and diligently purge all disloyalty from the country. We will be vulnerable to the opposition. We will almost definitely be able to overthrow us in a moment of weakness. That is the greatest challenge the EPA will ever face. If we prevail, our revolution will live on. Should we not, the dream of the greater Ukraine will be extinguished. Why do we still have this? This makes no sense. We would get auto annex if we didn't do uh, annex the communists. This is so stupid. This is, this is really dumb. Got the SB. The Suzla Bezbeki, our secret police force, has done its part in securing the destiny of the revolution. However, in light of recent events that occurred in the UPA, we might now have to make some intensive changes to how it's run and who runs it. The SB was uh, run by Mykola Lebed, a lapdog of Stetsko. The SB, having been run by Lebed with no oversight, has left it compromised. These two facts create an extremely concerning issue, something that can be consequential if it isn't fixed immediately. Oh, we're still losing weekly stability and whatnot, so I mean, it was just incredibly stupid. But whatever. And we can't fight this, so this is just destroying us for no reason. You get another production unit. Mm. 30 days, you get a whole one political power. You get 30 political power out of this. We need the weekly manpower, weekly stability, and more support. We get nothing out of it, so. That'd be wasting everything. Manpower, no. Well, this is a waste of time then. Happy July, though, everybody. I'm sorry that it's bugged, but there's not really much that we can do about it, you know? Emergency restructuring. There's systematic disloyalty everywhere in our government. The administration is no exception, according to our secret police. The sleuths about Best Becky are where the administrators you need to go. Let's be around up the administrators, interrogate them, relieve them of their duties, and dispose of them. The boss is preparing for this and has handpicked new administrators to replace them, our governments. Requires honest, slow, and diligent administrators to function. Should our administrators not meet those requirements, they will have to be excised, of course. When do we get a Korean mall? Did I already click on it? Normalcy crumbling. Neat lines were what Kliachevsky liked. Years of thick and uncut forests and disordered camps have taught him the virtue of that. They make compromising the police of Kiev were idiots. Shukovich appointees a lot of them. They have been sent southward, some further than the land itself. These new policemen were different. They may have been on the opposite side of the bars in certain areas. Uh, or cases, but they were loyal, at least that's what the recruiter said. He had lied, everyone lied to Kliachevsky and he knew. The hall was old, cold, and the heating system had died. Few knew how to fix the old Soviet contraptions, and even those who did were unlikely to even come close to the buildings of the volatile government. No one was let in any of their tepid warmth of sunlight, let alone its glow. All that illuminated the police conscript was a single flickering lantern just above their heads. Kliachevsky was far less imposing in person than in the myriad propaganda posters other regime made him out to be. As a sad figure in person, his skin drawn taut over his features. His brow bore a now permanent furrow, and his mouth seemed sucked into a four hour scowl. As he silently appraised each and every new policeman, stopping before none, yet making each feel as though he had stared into their very souls. Finally, stopped briskly walking back to the entrance, guards following closely behind him. The door slammed, and most of the men flinched. The first two were passable, liquidate the rest. And the autumn of anarchy. As predicted, the communists and Melniaks uh, noticed their reorganization, like ravens on a corpse. They once again revolted, hoping to topple a regime. Although they don't know it, they are gravely mistaken, of course. Our revolution is not a corpse, it's alive and thriving. We shall crush them quickly and decisively. However, we must act fast. These savages are ravaging the countryside, attempting to rally the people against us. To succeed, we must match the rampage with one of our own. A purimo? That thing slid there in my presence. I introduced that thing to my wife and children, and I trusted that thing. Dmitry Kliachivsky bellowed. Glass littered the floor of the General Sumptuous Kiev residence. Tapestries lay in tatters on the floor, the rest had been carefully and secretly moved by the staff. Klitschewski's rage had reached a point where it had no end. It was like a stormy sea. They never ceased its waves, and they merely changed length and width. Skeksko was manipulated. He had have been. Kind Stetsko. Good Skeksko. Loyal Stetsko. Klitschewski babbled. I always knew Shukovich. Shukovich was good for nothing. He was a wasteful idiot with a bandera and a stupid liberal to beat. He was probably in bed with the Yankees the whole time, yes? The Americans, the Jews of all them, Russians. Klitschewski's servants eyed each other nervously from behind walls or in hidden uh, covens. Klitschewski had developed a delightful new habit of appearing at random points that scream at and berate lone servants. 
Or it's just goes uh, wife. That cur, that manipulating cur, she was always in bed, or literally, definitely in bed with a Shukevich. Kachevsky wandered to the bathroom before storming out again with a crash. Gentlemen, summon a car. I wish to appraise what's left of my government. The entire staff servants rushed to the street, packing, uh, panicking while beseeching the driver to begin preparations. A cornered animal. So, uh, as someone said in the comments from the last video, apparently it's uh, we kept getting that bitter harvesting because we failed and tried to take out Ukraine before we ran out of food, which I guess makes sense. But at the same time, when you capture like other Ukrainian factions here, why don't you get food? Like, why don't you get the the stockpile of the remaining, uh, you know, faction? If they have any, they might not have any, but still. Um, if you want to do this again, please go ahead. But then we'll do the Polish Scourge next. For centuries, the Polish have oppressed the Ukrainian people. After the Polish-Soviet War, they seized Western Galicia, the rightful Ukrainian territory, from us. To the present day, they still own it, briefly interrupted by the invasion of Poland. Similarly to us, the Poles only just got independence from the Germans. They're still weak. If we plan well and strike them fast, we may continue our quest to create a greater Poland. So, four to one, as a man in front of the group cowered in fear on his knees, all the others, bureaucrats and newly rapidly hired to fill the state ranks, they knew there was going to be a great Pi uh, price to be paid indeed. But the boss was here and was unhappy. The reports had not been correct, the numbers had not added up. And the man on his knees was the cause of it all. He had been embezzling funds, stealing from the secret revenues that had been torturously collected and which were vital for the operation of the state as a whole. And the boss was clearly decided that it was an issue he'd personally attend to. They all listened to the man who they worked beside, begged for his life, pleading at how there had been no choice, that his children were starving, that he had no funds for them. Or no, had no he had to find funds for them. They all knew he spoke the truth, and many of them in being in a similar situation, and hoping that their own thefts had not been merely, similarly discovered. The boss listened carefully. At the end of it all, those watching saw him make a single nod as he pulled the man to his feet. He'd be merciful. He would save their plight. And so the man would not be executed, but he would pay for his theft as a ratio of four to one in fingers. The man's relief turned to terror as the bodyguards rushed forward, as a hammer came out, as the sound of crunching the bone echoed through the office. At the end, the man went as his co-workers did their best to ignore him, thankful that he had not been, been in his position. Uh, he would continue to do so for many days to come. Uh, better at least than death. Got a lot of uh, money, though. And then well, they multiply always. And we do have a cup of coffee here to keep us nice and satisfied. Uh, Kleochewski could feel his ridge buildings look at the reports neatly stacked upon his desk. Each and every one of them detailed the attacks of another state enemy of the state. Other people. Uh, Alf, him. Attacks aimed at the nascent state he managed to carve out. He would not have it. He had... W not worked, fought, and suffered for years at the hands of the Germans and their despised collaborators, not triumphed over them to such a degree to suffer the slings and arrows such filth. Melniaks, Judeo Bolsheviks, bandits, all of them scum, all of them enemies, all of them refusing to follow his leader's vision. And they multiplied. <clears throat> Every day there seemed to be more of them, and the reports of their activities only grew longer. They rampaged across the countryside, striking garrisons, villages, patrols, and anything else they could find. They attacked the soldiers, citizenry, and even each other, slavering beasts all. But he had encountered such beasts before, and he had beset them. He had killed them to a one. Soon that would be the fate of all those mentioned in the reports as well. He knew it would be so. He promised himself that it would be so. He trusted in the inevitability of his victory, and after all, he had been right about it thus far. Dedication to control, and galvanized the Galicians. To continue preparations of our annexation for Galicia, I must send a message to our Galician brothers right now. They're under Polish oppression. Soon we will liberate them, and we must establish contact there. Perhaps they can assist us in our cause. Our success relies on the cooperation of our countrymen to resist the subcultural Polish swine. Feelings, if left unchecked. Volodymyr walked silently down the cobbled streets, his gait bearing much more swagger. He bought a hat, a hat, what a luxury. If only his mother could see that hat. How many hours of sweat and tears and even a few drops of blood went into procuring him? Even a few years ago, that hat would have been impossible. The Poles wouldn't make them, even though they knew how. No, the dark factory sucked them up and spat them out, pale and tired. Few pale and tired men made hats such as these. Only after German barbarians were shown the door, could the Poles return to their purpose and glorious profession of hattery. Volodymyr whistled a happy tune. What counted for the business district of the village he had seen new life, not just for hatters, but butchers, who hawked no and exotic meats, and by God they'd beef. Farmers now sold more than just moldy carrots and stale bread, even a doctor offered his services. Further along, the menagerie came to the Poles. For many centuries, they'd grown used to running the town. They bragged about how they most statues in the public square were Poles, how the churches, even the Orthodox, were, they alleged, were built by Poles. Some confidently stated that Hitler himself was secretly a Pole, yet the very man had cut them down to size, even his departure had left them in a bind. The Polish wealthy had fled as Ukrainian boots trampled through the village, and the Polish poor hidden in the Polish middle attempted to live as normal. They quickly joined the poor, the thunder, leaflets, and posters. Volodymyr. A look at the star men, these animals who hawk junk and fungi, he humored them and paid a valued coin for a piece of burlap. He couldn't help but have his hand mitigate to his ever precious headgear to defend it from the sticky hands of these desperate people. Finally, Volodymyr stopped. A mark for that to you, Roscoe, you, you Jew. 
Volodymyr scarcely allowed the words before regretting him, but Paul stared at him angrily and potently, sadly. He paid and quickly left, his new hat weighing heavily in his hand. Hate begets hate, and roaches among the rats. There are many German collaborators, and they are rats scum of the earth. Although the Vaz and Bandera collaborated with the Nazis, they viewed it as an alliance. When the Nazis attempted to assert authority, however, they broke their pact with the Nazis. Those who continue to collaborate with the Nazis are rats. However, some don't like the Nazis. Yet they collaborate, fearing for their lives. These are the cockroaches, and we can easily filter them out from the rats. These roaches can be very useful to us. They have valuable experience and can be easily beaten into compliance. The harrowing of Galicia. Sir, the reports from Galicia have arrived. To make the road clear, Chivsky's newest aide laid a vanilla folder uh, neatly at the edge of his desk. Before gingerly backing away, Klyachevsky continued his writing, before suddenly snatching the documents away. His face was obscured by the rather large folder, yet another anger was obvious as he nearly ripped the corner off every page he turned. Finally, he set the folder down gently. Give me the journals, tell me it's about the situation in Galicia. I want you to take a couple minutes. A few men openly disobeyed the boss, and his journals weren't among them. Klyachevsky sat silently at his desk in front of this top brass, emotionless, his pale eyes staring at each, each one. This, he said softly, pushing the folder to the middle of the desk is unacceptable. The journals still glanced at one another, but not, not one spoke. Galicia is the embryo of our movement. It is a hotbed of Ukrainian national thought, and it is a seedbed for dear departed Stepan Bandera. Every man was silent for a moment to honor that dead demigod. Yet now it's a battleground, one which we seem to be losing. Klyachevsky's tone broke into a growl for a moment. I want every pole in that land buried in it or out of it. We all do, yet it seems that you have been soft-hearted. Kill the bombers' families, burn their farms, kill anyone who shelter them, and liquidate, liquidate on sight. How hard is that? Klyachevsky slammed his fist on the desk, making the generals flinch. So we can't expect the Poles not to do likewise, and more of that, and they'll start targeting the civilians. One general stuttered, it quickly realized his mistake. Perhaps they should. Perhaps it's time the Ukrainian people learn the nature of racial conflict, and learn that the Ukrainian state cannot exist unless it is populated only by Ukrainians. No half measures. Break open the caches. Give farm boys rops so and tell them to shoot Poles like foul if you have to. The Chiskis ranted and raved. The generals emerged with one solution duly hammered into each of their heads. No more half measures. Exterminate mill next vermin. After painstaking efforts from what remains of the Sluzba Best Becky, we've tracked down the remnants of the milita militant Melnyak movement, which is Chenhev. Chenhev. The faction is nothing but a shadow of its former self now under Roman Stusko. Once we purge the remnants of the Melnyaks, we'll destroy all factions of the OUM. Once more, we'll unite the OUN as one party in an occasion which merits a Slava Ukraini. Nice. A reward for the rats. The young Melnyak trembled, his eyes wide with terror as the, t the towering interrogator loomed over him. The t captor's sinister grin sent shivers down his spine as he sat, immobilized and bowed to a rickety wooden chair. Sweat poured from his brow, betraying the overwhelming fear that gripped him. You will talk, the interrogator said menacingly, his hand closing around the prisoner's throat. Perhaps you might just be spared if you do so quickly. Desperation took hold, and the captive Melnyak began to shout out the names and locations of his fellow OUN me and members. He hoped against hope that his cooperation would be enough to save him. The interrogator laughed, a cold, heartless sound that reverberated throughout the room. You mailing the acts have grown weak. It's no wonder, given how you let Germany trample us for two decades without resistance. Now it's our turn to trample you. A true Ukrainian would never betray his comrades. He died a thousand times over for his country. You traitors squandered your chance at redemption long ago, and we won't be as forgiving as the Germans. The prisoner's heart sank as the interrogator's laugh filled the room, echoing in his ears. He had only moments to realize the futility of his cooperation before the gun was cocked, and his vision faded to black, rewarded as a traitor deserves. Our peasant pawns. The king and peasant, in feudal times, the king ruled and protected the peasants who worked for him. While Europe moved past this relationship, the Russians didn't, under the incompetent rule. Russia lagged beyond the rest of Europe. Now we must modernize the relationship between the state and the peasant. These peasants are very conservative, and most enthusiastically would join ranks against the Melniaks and Bolsheviks. Should we use the peasants against them? They will help our cause. In this grand game of chess, the peasants are nothing but our pawns. Here's to the memories. The intermittent sound of the gunfire was only broken up by the noises of soldiers moving outside the door. As Klyachevsky's men continued to, their attempt to break in, Shushko knew that sooner or later they would be, and this hunt would come to an end. It's funny, isn't it? Uh, Sitsiborsky mused tirelessly as he leaned against the wall after everything that says how Yevhen's cause dies. He gave a hollow chuckle. What a sad end. Shushko could only silently nod. Neither of them had entirely seen eye to eye, but they had understood each other. As far as people to die with, he hadn't expected it would be Tsitsiborsky, but he supposed there were worse men. A few of those were left now, thanks to Klyachevsky. And to think only a few decades ago we were so close, Shushko murmured almost to himself. We were united, successful. There was a purpose, before he exhaled. Shaking his head, no one but Konovolets could have done it. Once he was gone, it all came crashing down. Aye, those were good days. Sitsiborsky agreed. Good times, good memories. They were shouting outside. It seems they found the entrance. Sitsiborsky sat down looking at the door. I think we've got a little time. Let's reminisce a little before it ends. As the rest of Klyachevsky's men continued working, both men spent time reflecting on their lives, their cause, and the times when things had not been so bleak. There were very few smiles or laughs, but they had grown numb to their fate, even as they mourned what had become of their cause. Battering ram smashed the door down, and both men barely were able to react before the barrels of rifles poked in and fired in, in an unceremonious barrage. Both men were cut down before they could even stand. Bleed Shimsky White. 
Without recent history, the communists persevered, even the defeat seemed in imminent. Lenin never gave up on his revolution, and eventually they overthrew the Russian Empire. Bukharin never gave up on the Soviet Union during Operation Barbarossa, and however, for Bukharin, the outcome was quite different, yet for the communists who will continue to live on, one spark of hope could lead to a fire resistance. To prevent this, we must act quickly and decisively, we must strike again, again, and again. If we give the communists time to look through wounds, we will be putting our government, government at risk. No matter the cost, no communists shall gain an inch of land in Ukraine. Poison gifts. As the promised her on uh, her first meeting, on the first meeting, the UPA sold her to return to the girl's village, even with more candy. The other children rushed to collect it, both for enjoyment and because any food was, in, was of immense value, but the girl stayed away. She remembered her father's anger the last time the soldier had come, the last time she had taken the offered candy. What he had told her about the family in the UPA, and though she couldn't describe it in complex fashion and wouldn't have known the word, she knew that there was an ulterior motive to his actions, so she stayed away and avoided him. Her friends did not. They did not understand it as she did now, and did not listen to the, her when she told them to avoid him as well. They called her scared. They stopped talking to her. They told her uh, others to do the same. It hurt terribly, but every time she was tempted to give him, she thought of her father's face the last time he had spoken about it. So she endured. When she returned home in tears, she found her father waiting. He was proud of her, he said, and the other children would soon learn the mistake. And he hugged her. It was enough for now, at least. Always a motive. An operation... Golovinsky. After meticulous planning by officers and the Vaz, it was ready. Operation Golovinsky, Operation Deliberate Galicia, has been extensively planned. Now the only thing separating us in the reunification with the countrymen is a simple go-ahead from an order from the Supreme Vaz and Poland shall once again our fury. Too bad I deleted all of our divisions, though. Oh well. Gotta save a dollar. New Ukraine, no memories. No old memories, at least. This man was Bukharin regularly. He served Lenin when he occupied uh, orders massacres and he ran like a coward when the Germans occupied our motherland. His eyes have invented tales and legends which have poisoned the minds of our youth. Fairy tales of resistance against the Hitlerites. It's a great falsity, a combination which shall henceforth be corrected. Alexander Shubsky had seen many show trials, in fact. He had participated in them so often that he knew them like actors' new plays. First there were the accusations and the witnesses, always vague with the injuries. He had bizarrely processed the naming of the accused as their injurer. They were followed by a defense, always weak, always neglecting exonerating evidence. Finally, there was a conviction, the cell, or the gallows. Does the excused accused challenge any of these charges? No. Alexander Shimsky, you are pronounced guilty on all charges. May God have mercy upon your soul. Shimsky was rarely ever surprised, but the rapidity of the trial and his arrival at the gallows nearly shocked him. His legs wavered, slightly nearly giving out, but he steadied himself. The cameras were watching, and it was best not to give them the show they wanted. He stared out at the assembled crowd. He pitied them. At least he would leave this nightmare. They would all remain in it for their entire lives. He again yell, Long live Lenin and the party. Long live the moral science of Marxism, Lenin, a cracked silence, the last hope of Ukrainian communism. Or a deficient administration, we will get up to functional administrative state, which is actually better than I thought it would be. We'll see what happens. Some of the in Germany as Speer did win. That's fine with us. God, I love caffeine. Please tell me we're not actually going to go to war. I thought we would at one point, but... In other campaigns like this. Glitchewski's smi icy smile was fixed on his face as he stood before the soldiers of Ukraine. As the sun beat down on them, he saved the moment. It was today when his legacy would be cemented, and history would be revering him as a man who saved Ukraine. Because of him, Ukraine would be hoped. Because of him, the humiliation of Galicia would be avenged. Because of him, Bandera's vision would soon be fulfilled. Soldiers and friends, he began, his demeanor calm, his voice stern. Today, we correct an injustice that has been inflicted on the Ukrainian people. Today, we reunite with the people who have been oppressed and persecuted by the Polish butchers. His voice turned colder as he... Raw disdain or warped is the words. The Poles believe they could rule our people and hold our lands with impunity. Oh crap, we actually go to war with them. He announced a pause, his eyes unblinking as each word was carefully enunciated. The solution ends today. Galicia's Ukrainian won an indivisible. There was a loud roar of approval from the soldiers. It was a call of those men whose blood was hot, raging and screaming for battle. Klitschewski made a gesture and the noise inst died instantly. Galicia's more than our land is where the birthplace of our movement began in the home of Bandera himself. He indicated, behind him, in the general direction of Galicia, today we fight for more than just Ukraine, but to liberate the home of one of Ukraine's greatest heroes. Amen. Once our victory is achieved, there will be none who deny that Ukraine belongs to none but the Ukrainians. Klitschewski allowed a moment for the cheers of the soldiers to endure. He allowed them to bask in the moment just before fighting began. The cold smile on his face. Gooch is a bit wider. Yes, he was certain that they were going to succeed. Now march, you know that Bandera smiles down on us from above. Echoes of invasion. The once vibrant streets of Lviv were now consumed by chaos, flames, and fear. As the Ukrainian army advanced through the city, the Polish population found themselves at the mercy of the invaders, a mercy that was not granted. Homes were ransacked, monuments destroyed, and lives uprooted. The scenes were nearly identical to those two decades earlier, however. This time there was less to even lose. Amidst a turmoil, a young Polish woman named Ma Marta huddled in the corner of her family's home, tightly clutching her younger brother, Pieter, to her chest. The sounds of gunfire and screams filled the air, and Marta prayed that they would be spared from the violence outside the door. Oh, we won. Look at that. 
Uh, the soldiers were driven by Klechewski's vision were relentless in their pursuit of death. They moved from house to house, leaving a trail of destruction in their wake. The terror that had gripped the city was no accident, but rather calculated act of aggression designed to instill fear, submission, and warning of things that of even worse things to come. With the cloak and night, Amart and Pieter ventured out of their hiding places and heard both flaming soldiers. Coming ever close, they're desperate to find safety. The siblings navigated through their devastated streets, the sights and sounds of the brutal invasion haunting them at every turn. They knew that the home that they had once known was gone for their years of freedom and being taken once again. They gazed from the hillside that overlooked their former home. Years of memories disappeared in an hour. They had little time to stare as the Ukrainian events continued. They had only one way to go as it continued west. Perhaps they never seen their home again. The lack of elevation. Uh, of Galicia? Well, waste not one now. The battle that morning for the small Polish inhabited town had been quick, victorious. Quite out of the ordinary for the Galician campaign in general, of course, but a welcome change nonetheless. The officer in charge of the forest was eager to move on, move forward. But there was one task that had to be taken care of first, and an important resource considering consideration besides. Stepping out of his command car, he conferred with the other officers as he looked at the town square where hundreds of Polish civilians, the town inhabitants, stood, quiet and huddled together. He noticed how few young men there were among them. That was good, he thought, for what was to come. There was no provision, they explained to the officers, for saboteurs in the rear. The vows had made the perfidity of the Poles very clear, and they could not leave them to a cosmic ship, as their men clearly already had that morning. At the same time, our supplies were scarce. The morning clash had used far more ammunition than expected, and what remained needed to be conserved for the next fight. It departed soon after, instructing them to form up their units after they were done. The officers looked at his departing figure, and then at each other. A slight nod passed between them as they split up and prepared to give their orders, fix bayonets, and the reclamation of Glicia. It was finished. Kleczewski stood in the heart of Galicia, flanked by his advisors, commanders, and rows upon rows of soldiers who cheered his name, roaring with an intensity that shook the ground. The prey was magnificent, and Kleczewski had a small but genuine smile as he looked out into the crowds. This was a triumph only comparable to when they first reclaimed Ukraine itself, Galicia's home, and she, where she rightfully belonged. The Poles had tried to fight, of course. They attempted to stem the tide of the Ukrainians pouring into Galicia, but they wilted under the force that had been brought to bear. Uh, they could not stand against the sons of Ukraine, for they knew they were fighting was, uh, was for not their own. This one. As Galicia began soaked in the blood of the Poles, they had finally conceded defeat once again. Uh, once Ukraine, of course, had begun encroaching on Poland itself. Tempting as it might have been to end the Polish menace once and for all, Kleczewski was satisfied with Galicia. The Poles had been humiliated, broken, and would never trouble Ukraine again. His legacy was now secured as a man who had first liberated Ukraine, and now brought them victory in Galicia soon. He would be known as a man who would make Ukraine whole once more. The men who surrounded him were, were all smiles as he prepared to give his victory speech, and just for a moment, Kleczewski. Fast in the adoration and euphoria as the crowd shouted his name, this he knew was only the beginning. None could stop them now. After decades of tears, Ukraine's most loyal sons finally reclaimed her from the defilers and avenged her greatest champion, Stepan Bandera. But they know this is only the beginning. Dealing with the degenerates, the traitors, and the invaders have cured Ukraine of her diseases, but she remains in pieces. This cannot be allowed to stand while the hive of scum and villainy <clears throat> and treason in Germania so breathes. Another confrontation with the Third Reich is inevitable, and every inch of Ukraine is needed for a final victory. Our commanders, regardless of their differences, know what must be done. The wayward territories of our homeland is lies scattered, broken, stolen away by races of filth and deception. Poland, Hungary, Romania, and what remains of the Germans and Crimea, and all will be were claimed. We'll offer these cowards a final chance to wash their hands of sin, should they refuse, or raise them to the ground. The year is 1964. No matter the cost and resources, time or martyrs, we will make Ukraine whole or scorn the world trying. But I hope you enjoyed our campaign as Ukrainian state. It was actually a lot of fun. Actually, you're claiming Galicia, as you can see. We actually have a couple of divisions just in case. But I just lied to you because they're gone. I like reclaiming Ukraine. It's a lot of fun. Look how much more Ukraine we have. We should get more Ukraine. Anyways, uh, leave a like if you like the video. Uh, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great Ukrainian rest of your day.